Took away the prophet's dream for a prophet on the street. Now she's stronger than you know. A heart of steel starts to grow. All his life he's been told he'll be nothing when he's old. All the kicks and all the blows he won't ever let it show. Cause he's stronger than you know. A heart of steel starts to grow. When you've been fighting for it all.
Hoping you take that jump You don't feel the fall Hoping the water rises You build to warm Hoping the crowd screams out You're screaming your name Hope if everybody runs You choose to stay Hope that you fall in love And it hurts so bad
to change the world. I'll make the moon shine just for your view. I'll make the starlight circle the room. And if you feel like night is falling, I wanna be the one you're calling. 'Cause I believe that you can lead the way. I just wanna be somebody to someone. Oh, I wanna be somebody to someone. Somebody to someone And if the sun starts setting The sky goes cold And if the clouds get heavy And start to fall I really need somebody to call my own I want to be somebody to someone Someone to you Someone to you Someone to you Took away the prophet's dream for a prophet on the street. Now she's stronger than you know. A heart of steel starts to grow. All his life he's been told he'll be nothing when he's old. All the kicks and all the blows he won't ever let it show. 'Cause he's stronger than you know. A heart of steel starts to grow. When you've been fighting.
And if I said I knew the way, I just eat it and then pretend that it's gourmet. Good morning. Welcome parents, students, siblings, staff and those joining us at home by a live stream for the graduation ceremony of Aspey State High School's class of 2021. To start this morning's proceedings, I'd like to welcome Latrell, uh, sorry, Catrell Rolf Trace to the microphone to do our acknowledgement of country. Good morning, I'm Control Chase, and I would like to respectfully acknowledge the past, present, traditional owners of this land which we are meeting today, that being the land of the Turrbal people. I also wish to acknowledge the contributions of Aboriginal Australians and non-Aboriginal Australians to education in this country that we live and share it together. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask that you be upstanding for the Aspie Singers and the National Anthem. Thank you. It's my pleasure to welcome to the microphone our principal, Jakita Miller. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And I just need to check, Mrs. Redman, are you in the room and are you organised? I'm just... Mrs. Lonsdale, would you be able to check in where Mrs. Redman is with her little task that she has to do a bit... in? I might have to be a bit switcheroony if we're not ready with that. So, hello, everybody. Welcome. It's been a big, 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 long, long, long road to get here for some of us, hasn't it? And while you're watching the incredible stagecraft of the Aspley High School students, can I thank you all for a couple of things? Can I thank you, please, for your patience with our event um, it's a little bit like the world that we have at the moment, uncertainty. And, of course, to add it in, we made sure it was raining this morning. So, um, and I know from the Year 12s, there's a few of them who think that because it's raining this morning, it will mean it won't rain this afternoon. So, their $320 hair dues will be all okay. So, that's what we're looking for. Welcome, everybody. It's um, an absolute pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be saying congratulations to the class of 20, 
21. We had an amazing honour ceremony yesterday and we will continue to celebrate this morning and of course into the night tonight. I was just looking at the um, vocal group, the Astley Singers, and I just noticed that the, um, and I know Matthew Layden's really excited about that, that this is probably close to his last time he'll be singing on this stage with his sister Chloe and Tabitha Franklin, it's her last time to sing, and Riley, thank you for playing guitar, and it's been a bit like that in the last few weeks, the last times, and I know that Year 12s, you'll be heading into some very exciting first times, and that's what we wish you well about today. Radio. Yes, Paige Peacock, I don't have my collots on, but I'm wearing my glasses, you'll be pleased to know. What a road, what a road we have had to get here. Um, I was talking to a few of you the other day because I distinctly remember some of you in your enrolment interviews and you were really tiny and some of you might remember how I was excited because some of you were even shorter than me. That has completely, completely changed over the last six years. Thankfully for you, mixed for me, um, but it was really obvious looking at those photos just how much you have grown, not only physically, but we know with all of you in front of us, there's been lots of growth and lots of change and we've welcomed that. Some of us have struggled with it, but certainly it's been everything that we expect for high school. It's not easy, but it's worth persevering and getting through. And it has been a particularly interesting couple of years because, quite frankly, you guys have been the amazing architects of understanding how many different plans you need in your life. And I think today is a bit of an indication of that. Plan A, B, C, D, um, the plan E that went, we'll let some people in here, but we won't make sure everyone else is up there. This is sort of how we roll. And I think of all the year levels that have had to survive through this pandemic, I think you have certainly understood that and taken that on board. I think that for parents, it's an interesting journey for you um, it's been interesting for us as teachers to work out how do we support and nurture um, your child through this stage. Now, Year 12, it's a big day, and we talked about this quickly yesterday for you, but it's a really big day for the families who are in the room, okay? So for some of you families, you've done a secret happy dance, and I might say some of you it wasn't too secret, because some of you this is your last time. I thank you. And you know that it's my last time as a parent. Sam's done well. I don't know where he is because he had his formal last night. So I'll, I'll talk a bit about that later. Anyway, you all feel my pain and I feel your pain. But congratulations to those of you who've got to the beginning of the new phase of your parenting journey, which is to say farewell to high school. Um, farewell to stinky lunch boxes, last minute assignments, although I'm not convinced with my experience of being a parent of a uni student, the last minute assignments may continue for some of you, but you won't know about them, hopefully. And I guess the other one that I um, know you're going to miss, parents, is the report card. The report card. And we are all got the report card in our head right now, don't we? Jakita Miller could do from more concentration in class. Year 12, you're never, ever, ever going to get a report card again. And I know you're very sad about that. So today, though, we do say farewell to some important people, um, not just the most important people, but I did want to recognise there's some families from Aspley who've been here a very, very long time. And Michelle's going to speak a little bit on your behalf later. But I did want to acknowledge that there are lots of families who have been with us a long time but there are also some people who, like the students here, some students do a little bit more around the place because they can or they're inclined to. And we are saying farewell to um, two gentlemen to start with. I um, want to acknowledge Ian Charlesworth and Stephen NG, who have been on our school council and um, supporting us in that regard for quite a number of years. And I'm waiting for my prize givers, but where are we? Okay, yes, so, okay, can we just please, very small token of our appreciation for your time on um, school council, but it is something that's really important to school and important to the rest of you as families, so they're the guardians and custodians of the culture. So can we just give those two school council families a round of applause, please?
And I know there's loads of you in the audience, parents, who are part of our PNC Association, but you don't get a special farewell today because you actually have to keep going with us because some of you have your children still here. But I want to acknowledge one in particular, well, two in particular, but one who doesn't get a prize, and that's because... She is an employee as well, and I'm a very diligent public servant, and I wouldn't want you thinking I'm gifting my employees with anything. Caroline Grant, thank you for being an outstanding treasurer and being the mother of Alfie. And look, finally, she won't like this, and this is why we're doing it as subtly as we can, like a sledgehammer. Debbie Hutchison, mum of Luke, and mum of who else? Kate who has got awesome hair today, just saying. Debbie, thank you. You've been behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, at the uniform shop. Very, very, very helpful president of the PNC and a long-term PNC member. So Debbie is all the way over there. Debbie, give us a wave because I'm sorry. You're going to also get the Aspley Koala and an orchid. Thank you. And, it, and we talked yesterday, parents, with the students about well-being and how gratitude and actually being really, knowing what you appreciate in life, that's a big part of it. So taking the time to thank the families, thanking our teachers, thanking all of those who've been instrumental in your journey, particularly Year 12s, make sure you take that with you when you finish. And I guess, parents, the balance of um, protecting and strengthening your child has always been the dilemma, isn't it? Do you protect them and wrap everything around them? Or do you decide that what you really, really want to do is teach them how to be strong enough on their own? And that's super important. And I know we've talked about this before, about the, the analogy of when they learn to walk and that every time they fell down and they cried, if you'd pick them up and never, ever let them keep trying, they, they wouldn't get there. So life's a little bit like that. But year 12s, be kind to your parents. Because we sometimes don't know what protection looks like and what strengthening looks like. And you need to have a voice in that, but a respectful voice. And this is a really interesting time for all of us as parents. And you're still children. You'll always be your parent's child. So with that in mind, Year 12s, be really, really kind. Please return their text messages in the next couple of weeks and into the future. And just think about it through their eyes. That's really important. I'd like to thank parents for privileging us with being able to have your children here. I know for some, some of you it's been um, up and down um, and I've always appreciated that you've been um, honest with us, you've listened and you've been on the journey with us, which is the only way this can ever work. And I guess for some parents this is the last time that you'll be in the journey and a relationship with a community like this. So thank you very, very much. And I really want to make sure that um, you come away today feeling like the ceremony your young people have got has honoured you as much as your child. So Year 12s, I do want you to give your parents a big round of applause, please. And I know that for some of us, I'm just thinking about the multiple children who've been through the school. I'm thinking about the Harveys, the Butler family, I'm thinking about the Hammer family and those boys who've made our hearts sing and our toes tap for many years. And I guess, who else? And I'm not going to be able to remember everyone, but I've, I've thought of the Mackenzies, the Loveridges, the Knights, the Muller family, um, the Gunner family, the Olsons, the Ruckers, the Stones, the Brewer twins, um, the Alvarez Keffords, the Shepherds, our darling Rachel, the Kulchik on the drums and the tambourine. And where's Hayley, Hayley Schmidt? Hayley? Hey, Hayley. Mr. Fisher is so happy that you're here today and that you're graduating. Mr. Fisher, the principal of Tagum State School. And I know I haven't captured everybody in the room, but I, I actually am fortunate that I get to shake the hand of every single one of these students at the end. So, um, parents, thank you again. Now, Year 12s, only a couple of more times I get to call you that. Um, it's been an amazing couple of years. We've learned to appreciate so many things. And I think... If I, in year 12, had learned to appreciate the things the way you have had to through the last couple of years, I think I would have had a few life lessons earlier, particularly that lesson about happiness and what it is. 
and happiness isn't about getting everything that you want. It's about appreciating what you've got. And if we think about those things that we've started to appreciate is amazing. Like, remember your year 11 social was cancelled for COVID, but you made the best of it and had a fun time here in the hall. Who would have thought that we'd be happy about something like that? Who thought we'd be ever happy that we don't have to wear masks here today? And I think taking those small things and appreciating them and taking that lesson in life is really important. Where's my, my UK tour about buddies? You know, we, how lucky were we? We got home just in time. We got to travel through the UK. And I'm thinking from a distance, Cameron, you're probably even thinking those early morning wake-up calls from Miss Miller might have been worth it. No? Still not... To, still too soon? Yeah, OK. All right. Um, gratitude. The other thing I would like to note is how excited we are that we can dance tonight. And I know I just need to give a particular shout out to some people who are really excited about uh, the progressive barn dance, being able to do the nutbush and also do the uh, gypsy tap with me tonight. And this is particularly for you, Lachlan, Corey, James and Kyle, etc., etc. Thank you for your diligence and your engagement on Tuesday afternoon. And we're looking forward to that tonight. And who would have thought the dancing would have been something that we would be grateful and thankful for? But they're the lessons. Happiness is appreciating what you have. Many, many tiny appreciation things for you, Year 12s, because, as you know, you're very precious to all of us. I've appreciated Book Club, Steph, Brooke, my other DP. I've watched many of you over the years in your football matches, holding your head up with pride, even though we might have had a pretty bad scoreline. Miss Lila, your warm smile. I'm going to miss that. So many of you found your voice since you've been here. Um, Jackson, every time I hear you sing, I remember my year 10 conversations with you before the UK tour. You know what I mean. Tabitha, your voice has grown, your confidence has grown, and it's always a pleasure and you, you and Cody are a key reason for our wonderful strings program here. Thank you. Chloe, always there. Last minute thank yous. Always offering, offering, offering. And for Miss Michelle Pitcher, I'd just like to shout out to you. I'm going to um, be talking a little bit about a learning pit later and we know that that is something you have embraced and loved. Some of us have had immeasurable pain and a really, really tough year or a couple of years, you know who you are. I just want to congratulate you for being here and congratulate your families for being able to, with that amazing, awful, challenging set of circumstances, you've still managed to be here. And um, our hearts go out to you and we'll always be thinking of you. And I think they say, parents, that the measure of success for parents is how your kids behave when you're not around which is a bit worrying for me and I'll reference the fact that I don't know where my son is right now and I'm sure some of you will find out on his Insta stories. Can you not tell me? Okay, please don't tell me. <laughs> um, being serious though about this, the measure of our success is as parents, we're looking for what you're going to be like when you leave, that we're not going to be able to be around you. And I, I want to share this one. It's a great story and it, it's the Inskip Point crew. So often, I don't know if you can believe this, parents, I get emails or complaining phone calls from parents, from not parents mainly, but members of the public. This child didn't stand up on the bus. This person might have used naughty language. So every time I get something in my inbox, it's a bit... Ee. This one was delightful, and this was to the Inskip Point crew. So this is Jace, Brad, Kai and Blake. And basically this was four young men who went camping over the September holidays, and during their time away from their parents were civil, they really impressed everybody who was camping with them. They weren't being big and showy, they didn't do it for a badge, they did it because that's what they knew they had to do. And it motivated someone to email me to say what a credit they were to their families and to their school. And I guess students, that's what we're hoping for from you, that when you leave us and we're not looking at you all the time, you make good decisions, that you take that civility piece with you, because that's the reason we have you, we don't have you to keep you. And at school, we don't start you to not finish you. So I'm really hoping that you take those messages away from Aspley High. 
And during this ceremony, parents, you're going to see some students who are going to be getting awards and they will be recognition for really outstanding, high-level academic performance, but they will also be for long-term service. Those kids who turn up year after year in our programs. And that's what life is about, isn't it? It's not about just hitting those big, big, big goals all the time, but it's persistently engaging in things that you like and love and getting mastery over those. The other thing about that is that none of these students have actually done any of this to get the awards, and that's another message. Looking for external motivation isn't going to get it for us people. We need to want to do it ourselves. And there's so many stories of people who are like that. I think about Lillian when she's sitting there giving advice to a year 11 student who just said, stay in your own lane. And I just went, wow, if I had have known that when I was in year 12, I think my life would have been different. Elise, you're straight facts. Yeah, no mucking around with Elise. You know where you stand. And Janvi, you're always just doing it and not doing any of these things for accolades or prizes. And I guess that's the thing that we're always looking for. Now, I know we've been talking about growth mindsets for years and Bram, icebergs, you wanted that, I've done it, and Michelle, the learning pits. But they are actually genuine things that will help you in life. And we do talk about those so that hopefully you will dig deep and remember them. So I'm going to leave you with a new one that I think pulls them all together. And it's a Japanese proverb that really sums up growth mindsets, learning pits, and the power of yet. So I'm going to completely butcher this, so I'm apologising to every fluent Japanese speaker in the room right up front. Nana Kurobi Yaoki. It translates into fall seven times and stand up eight. Fall seven, rise eight. At the very least, it means that every time life, lock, life knocks you down, you stand back up. More deeply, it means that regardless of what has happened, how bad it is how you feel, how you think you can't go on, you do. That when things get in your way and it's not looking your own way, you get up and do it anyway. And examples of that, I think about, you can think about that really easily when you think about sport. I think about some of you in this room have battled with injury, so the plans that you had didn't come to fruition but you just keep going. I think of Simeon Sick, who couldn't perform at the Sandgate Youth Festival, but went there and supported Fifth Dynasty and the rest of the bands anyway. So fall seven, rise eight. Choose to get up and have another go. And think about what you learned when you stumbled or while you were lying on the ground. And take that learning and get up and do it again. Not the same mistake, but get into life and stand up eight times. Ultimately, it's the learning that you do, the iterative learning that will help you in life, everybody. So when you next have a challenge or you feel like life has knocked you out, get up again. I recall a conversation with Mac, Max Birch about at-home learning and how that was a bit of a challenge and what he did to address that when he came back. That is the idea. As small as that seems, it's a big deal because some people did not get back up again after at-home learning. Trent, some people don't get back to playing, do they, after they get an injury? Get up again. Okay. I'm coming to the time now that I'm going to invite the first group who are going to graduate to make their way to their positions. So if you could please... Now, I'm very excited about this. Lachlan's leading them out. Lachlan and I, yes. So with dignity, can you please just... Stand up and make your way. And as they're doing that, I'll start my conclusion. As life, con year 12, as life continues to happen and you continue your journey into adulthood, make sure you take full seven rise eight with you and make sure you know that your community loves you and that we have appreciated being part of your lives. Thank you very much and I'll hand over to Mr. Harding. Good morning, everyone. It's a, um, it's a privilege to be the person in the school who gets to come along to these graduation students and 
congratulate our young people here today. I'd like to say a very big welcome to all of those parents out there, some of whom I've only ever spoken to on the phone, but it is very nice to see all your faces here. And to those people watching at home on live stream, um, we're very, very happy that you can be part of our ceremony. I think it's time to start graduating some students. So, after receiving their folders, students will head over there, grab a photo from the other Mr Harding in the school, and then they will return back to their seats, and we're going to do a very big cheer right at the very end. If you'd like to cheer during the presentation as well, you're more than welcome. Okay, here we go. Firstly, we have Lachlan Allen. Lachlan's career goal is to complete an apprenticeship. Josh Atkinson. Josh's career goal is also to complete an apprenticeship. Fiona Avanzado. Fiona's goal is to study a Bachelor of Nursing. Hadrian Ballard Cosy. Hadrian's goal is to work as a motor mechanic. Tanisha Blair. Tanisha's goal is to finish her traineeship in Allied Health. Hamish Bloomer. Hamish's goal is to pursue further study and employment pathways. Ryan Boschler. <laughs> Ryan's career goal is to complete an apprenticeship in carpentry. Martine Bozemir. Do I get anywhere near it? <laughs> Martine's goal is to um, undertake an electrical apprenticeship. Dylan Brewer. Dylan's goal is to study science. Alistair Butler. Alistair's career goal is to be a police officer. Emma Cahill. Emma's goal is to pursue further study. Anthony Cannon. Anthony's career goal is to be a nurse. Sophia Cicetto. Sophia's goal is to continue studying at TAFE. Nash Cousins. Nash's career goal is to be an electrician. Massimo Kupo. Massimo's career goal is to pursue full-time employment. Rory Elwood. Rory's goal is to complete an electro-technology apprenticeship. Jacqueline Garland. Career goal, to be a nurse. Thank you. 
Jeslyn Gill. Jaslyn's goal is to study medicine. Harris Gorlai. Paris's goal is to undertake further study and seek employment pathways. Hannah Grant. Hannah's goal is to pursue university studies. Benjamin Greenway. Benjamin's goal is to study a Cert three in Animal Studies. Jackson Greenaway. Jackson's goal is to complete a childcare traineeship. Erin Gunner. Erin's career goal is to be a software developer. Kyra Hawkey. Kyra's goal is to study a Bachelor of Exercise and Sports Science. Manaya Hanare. Manaya's career goal is to be a physiotherapist. Jordan Higgins. Jordan's career goal is to seek full-time employment. Zaya Heisen. Isaiah's goal is to complete an apprenticeship. Isaac Hobbs. Isaac's career goal is to study nursing. Michael Hungerford. Michael's career goal is to be a plumber. Raphael Hunt. Raphael's goal is to pursue further study and employment pathways. Maeve Ives. With a goal of studying a Bachelor of Paramedicine and Nursing. Shaylee Jackson. Shaylee's goal is to work as a veterinarian nurse. Alicia Jonk. Alicia's goal is to study a Bachelor of Business and Property Economics. Bradley Canis. Bradley's goal is to complete an apprenticeship. Matthew Klutenberg. (laughs) 
Matthew's career goal is to be a painter and work in the trades industry. Caitlin Knight. Caitlin's career goal is to be a nurse. Logan Kong. Logan's goal is to study occupational therapy. Nicola Kaluz. Nicola's goal is to study criminology. Crystal Lee. Crystal's goal is to be a scientist. And finally from our first group, Caitlin Lingham. And Caitlin's goal simply says to have a positive impact on people's lives. Okay, I would now like to invite you to have a look at our side screens as some videos are about to begin and our next group of students can start to make their way over to Mr Sparks. It wouldn't be a, um, a graduation ceremony without that song coming on, would it? Okay, let's continue graduating our students. Firstly, Matthew Lopez Vito. Matthew's goal is to work in the automotive industry. Lauren Loveridge. Lauren's goal is to study at TAFE. Brittany McCormack. Brittany's career goal is to work as a real estate agent. Brianna McGrath. Brianna's goal is to complete an apprenticeship. Corey Miles. Corey's goal is to be a mechanic. Diana Marahi. (laughs) 
Diana's goal is to be a hair stylist. Jacob Neal. Jacob's career goal is to be an anaesthetic technician. Trang Nguyen. With the goal of studying hotel management. Jace O'Brien. Jace's goal is to be a clinical nurse. Bram Olson. Bram's goal is to complete an apprenticeship in plumbing. Sally Palace. with a goal of working in the construction industry. Blake Payne. Blake's goal is to complete an apprenticeship in plumbing. Hayden Peva. Hayden's goal is to have a career in screen and media. Priya Ravindran. Priya's goal is to be a nurse. Christian Lee Robinson. with a career goal of being a police officer. Andrew Rucker. Andrew's goal is to study IT. Connor Ryan. Connor's career goal is to complete an apprenticeship. Haley Schmidt. <laughs> Haley's career goal is to be a youth worker. Lecky Seeger. with the career goal of studying nursing. Jonathan Shand. Jonathan's career goal is to complete an apprenticeship in solid plastering. Jack Shen. Jack aims to be a computer and software engineer. Brianna Simmons. Brianna's goal is to be a veterinarian nurse. Kyle Stone. Kyle's career goal is to complete an apprenticeship in carpentry 
and I dare say also do a lot of fishing in his spare time. <laughs> Sienna Sudakaran. Sienna's goal is to be a midwife. Cora Thompson. Cora's goal is to be an early childhood educator. Juan Vargas Rodriguez. Juan's career goal is to study IT. Ethan Wade. Ethan's career goal is to be an artist. Kaya Walker. Kaya's goal is to be a successful business owner. Quinn Ward. Quinn's goal is to complete an apprenticeship in carpentry. James Warner. James's goal is to pursue full-time employment. Ryan Webb. Ryan's goal is to pursue further study and employment pathways. Junior Willie. Junior's career goal is to be an air traffic controller. Scott Zhao. Scott's career... As a side note there, Scott's career goal is to complete an apprenticeship in carpentry as well. <laughs> um, Aidan Zon. Aidan's goal is to have a career in the Special Forces. Xander Carpenter. Xander's goal is to have a career in engineering. Lily Cooper. Lily's goal is to be a psychologist. Piper Dakin. Piper's goal is to be a midwife.
Kenza Duma Delage. Kenza's goal is to study paramedical science. Talisha Hull. Talisha's goal is to complete a Bachelor of Medical Science. Mahdi Muzaret. Mahdi's goal is to work in the construction industry. Frank Parch. Frank's goal is to pursue further full-time employment pathways. And our last graduate from our second group, AJ Rue. And AJ's career goal is to work in the design and architecture space. I would now like to invite our next group of Year 12s to make their way, and I would invite all of our guests to have a look at our screens for our next video. I can almost see it, that dream I'm dreaming, but there's a voice inside my head saying, you'll never reach it. Every step I'm taking, every move I make feels lost with no direction my faith is shaken but i i gotta keep trying gotta keep my head held high there's always gonna be another mountain i'm always gonna I'm taking Sometimes I knock me down But no, I'm not breaking I may not know it But these are the moments That I'm gonna remember most yeah. Just gotta keep Before I invite our next set of students to the stage We are also going to be uh, presenting students a variety of different awards in addition to their graduation folders. Um, these awards, many of which will be contained in your folders, but I think it's a really important moment um, as we have our graduates cross the stage to recognise their achievements. These awards range from gold, silver and bronze awards for exceptional service in our school, to sporting awards, academic awards, all-rounder awards, grade point average awards, and finally, special awards to recognise outstanding performance. Okay. Our next graduate is Hayley Burgess. <laughs> Hayley's career goal is to be a paediatric doctor and she is also the recipient of a bronze service award. Samantha Carter. <laughs> Samantha's goal is to study social work and she is also the recipient of a Bronze Service Award. <laughs> Lila Church. <laughs> Lila's goal is to be a dental assistant and she also takes home today a Bronze Service Award. <laughs> K. 
Caitlin Harvey. <laughs> Caitlin's goal is to be a midwife and she is also receiving a bronze service award. Kate Hutchinson. Kate's goal is to study a Bachelor of Crime and Justice, and Kate is also the recipient of a Bronze Service Award. Elise Blake. Elise aims to be a nurse and is also taking home a Bronze Service Award. Bree McKenzie. Bree's goal is to study education and teaching and is also taking home a Bronze Service Award. Carmen Odisho. Carmen's goal is to be a psychologist and she is also taking home a Bronze Service Award. Bradley Gates. Brad's goal is to be a physiotherapist and he is also taking home today a Silver Service Award. Rachel Shepherd. Rachel's goal is to have a career in the hospitality industry and she is also the recipient of a Silver Service Award. <laughs> Carla Alvarez Kefford. <laughs> Carla aims to study a Bachelor of Visual Art, and quite fittingly, she is the award winner for Visual Art for 2021. <laughs> Nicholas Brewer. Nicholas aims to study business management and he is also the award winner for general mathematics. <laughs> Tiffany Clancy. <laughs> Tiffany's goal is to study nursing and she is also the award winner for social and community studies. <laughs> Oliver Gibson. Oliver's goal is to have a career at Queensland Rail and he is also the recipient of the Essential Mathematics Award. <laughs> Darius McLean. Darius aims to study computer science and again, quite fittingly, he is the winner of the Digital Solutions Award. Kayla Palmieri. <laughs> Kayla aims to study a Bachelor of Creative Arts and is also the Drama Award winner for 2021. <laughs> Hannah Williamson. <laughs> Hannah's goal is to be a midwife and she is also the award winner for business for 2021. <laughs> Rena Gonzalez. <laughs> Rena aims to pursue further study and employment pathways and is also a grade point average award winner. <laughs> Thomas McMahr. Thomas aims to study a Bachelor of Computer Science and he is also the winner of a Grade Point Average Award. <laughs> Samuel Burnett Cooper. <laughs> S 
Samuel's goal is to obtain a career in sport and exercise science, and he is also an Aspley Eagles program six-year service award winner. Ethan Muller. Ethan's goal is to be a teacher, and he is also a recipient of the Aspley Eagles Program Six Years Service Award. Cameron Nimmo. Cameron aims to study finance and is also a winner of the Aspley Eagles Program Six Years Service Award. Jackson Lloyd. Jackson's goal is to pursue a career in the automotive industry, and he is also the award winner for furnishing skills and industrial technology skills. Ashley Streak. Ashley's career goal is to be a police officer and she takes out two awards, those being Essential English and a Bronze Service Award. <laughs> Caleb Tongia. <laughs> now you've made me lose my spot, Caleb. <laughs> Um, Caleb aims to study art and he is the award winner for Visual Arts in Practice and the Bronze Service Award. <laughs> Brooke Dennis. Brooke aims to be a veterinarian nurse and she is today receiving the Science in Practice Award and an All-Rounder Award. Max Wadsworth. Max, you might need to pause there for a second because I've got a bit to read about you. Max aims to complete an apprenticeship and work as an aircraft technician. He is also receiving a Bronze Service Award and a Com Community Engagement Performance Award for three years' service. Jackson Mort. Jackson's goal is to study a Bachelor of Music and he is receiving a Silver Service Award and a Community Engagement Performance Award for three years' service. <laughs> Ethigu Poor. <laughs> Ethigu's goal is to be a police officer and he is also receiving today a Bronze Service Award and an Aspley Eagles Program Six Years of Service Award. And our last graduate from this group, Eden Dukeman. Eden's goal is to be a criminal psychologist, and quite rightly, she is the Legal Studies Award winner and a Silver Service Award winner. We are now going to have our final video transition and I would like to welcome our remaining graduates to join our line down near Mr Sparks. I always knew this day would come We'd be standing one by one With our future in our hands So many dreams, so many plans Always knew after all these years There'd be laughter, there'd be tears But never thought I'd walk away With so much joy, but so much pain
got a box of tissues up here near the lectern if anyone needs one, okay? <laughs> All righty. Let's graduate our final group of students. Now, many of these students are receiving multiple awards, so students, I would ask that you not exit stage until I've finished reading through the list, because we really want to celebrate your achievements. Firstly, we have Camden Charlesworth. <laughs> Camden's goal is to study music and today he is receiving a Silver Service Award and a Community Engagement Performance Award for five years of service. Paige Peacock Ward. Paige's goal is to be a primary school teacher and Paige today is receiving a Silver Service Award and a Community Engagement for Performance Award for five years' service. <laughs> Cody Butler. <laughs> Cody's goal is to begin a traineeship in business and I'm very pleased to announce that today he is also taking home a Silver Service Award and a String Ensemble Award for six years of service. Chantal Lull. <laughs> Chantal's career goal is to be an actor and she is also receiving today a Silver Service Award and a Dance Team Award for six years of service. <laughs> Janvi Chand. Janvi's goal is to study a Bachelor of Business Management and today she is receiving an All-Rounder Award and a Gold Service Award. <laughs> Emerson Warwork. <laughs> Emerson's goal is to study teaching and she is also the recipient of an All-Rounder Award and a Gold Service Award. <laughs> Riley Hemmer. <laughs> now, Riley's goal written here is to become a master of music, and I think we all agree that he is on the way to be doing that. He is also receiving a Gold Service Award and a Community Engagement Performance Award for five years' service. <laughs> Dushant Banimandab. <laughs> Dushant's goal is to study engineering, and he is also taking home today a Grade Point Average Award and the Ancient History Award. Dylan Harrison. <laughs> Dylan's goal is to study business and he is also receiving today a Grade Point Average Award and the Business Studies Award. <laughs> Ryan Sanka. Ryan aims to study a science degree and he is also receiving a Grade Point Average Award and the Economics Award.
Max Birch. <laughs> Max aims to study exercise science and he is receiving the Earth and Environmental Science Award, an All-Rounder Award and the Bronze Service Award. <laughs> Emily Walsh. Emily's goal is to study education, and today she is also receiving the Dance Award, the Silver Service Award, and a Dance Team Award for six years of service. <laughs> Sophia Oliveira. <laughs> Sophia's goal is to study engineering, and she is the recipient of a Grade Point Average Award, a Silver Service Award, and a Consistent Academic Achiever Award over six semesters. Aaron Paras smith Aaron's goal is to study aerospace engineering and he is, the award, he is winning the following awards. The Grade Point Average Award, the English Award, and a Consistent Academic Achiever Award across five semesters. <laughs> Brooke Murphy. <laughs> Brooke's goal is to study at university and she is receiving the Sport and Recreation Award, an All-Rounder Award, the Bronze Service Award, and an Aspley Eagles Program Award for six years of service. <laughs> Oliver Griffiths. <laughs> Oliver's goal is to study sports science at university and he is receiving a Grade Point Average Award, an All-Rounder Award, a Bronze Service Award, and a Consistent Academic Achiever Award across six semesters. <laughs> Emma Medcalf. <laughs> Emma's goal is to study Biomedical Science, and she is also receiving a Grade Point Average Award, the Psychology Award, a Bronze Service Award, and a Consistent Academic Achiever Award across six semesters. <laughs> Amanda NG. Amanda's goal is to pursue further study and employment pathways, and today she is receiving a Grade Point Average Award, the Biology Award, an All-Rounder Award, and a Bronze Service Award. <laughs> Zin Long. <laughs> Zin's career goal is to be a dietitian and she is receiving today a Grade Point Average Award, the Biology Award, the Mathematical Methods Award, and a Silver Service Award. <laughs> Brianna Totten. <laughs> Brianna's goal is to study vision science, and or occupational therapy, and today she is receiving the Grade Point Average Award, the Psychology Award, the Gold Service Award, a Community Engagement Performance Award for four years service, and a Dance Team Award for six years of service. Now, for our remaining graduates, when you come up onto the stage, I would like you to stand next to me while I say some nice things about you. Trent Vakiso.
Now, Trent's career goal is to make his NRL debut for the Melbourne Storm. Trent will be receiving a Silver Service Award and also the Athlete with Potential Award. Now, not only is Trent a house captain for Kenny, in case you didn't know, he is also a very talented rugby league player. In 2018, Trent was selected for the South East Queensland team, but also the Queensland Academy of Sport team. In 2019, he was selected in the Queensland Schoolboys team and also the Australian Schoolboys Merit team. He's also signed a contract with the Melbourne Storm. But, but wait, there's more. Un unfortunately, at the start of the year, he did sustain a serious injury. And I'd like to tell you a story here. Now, I was talking to Trent the other day, and he's in my social and community studies class. He said, I've got an interview coming up this afternoon or tomorrow. I went, oh, OK, that sounds good. So we talk about interviews all the time. I said, oh, who's it with? Oh, it's just with Wayne Bennett at the Redcliffe Thumb Dolphins. So, Trent, as much as I would love to see you playing for my Brisbane Broncos one day, we wish you all the very best, no matter what jersey you are wearing, and I guarantee you we will be there cheering for you when that day comes. Our next graduate is Kai Jones. <laughs> Kai's career goal is to be an architect. He takes home the Physical Education Award and also the Sportsman of the Year Award. <laughs> Stay with me. As a Year 12 student, he's not only topped general physical education, but excelled in gymnastics. To gain selection into the Queensland team, he placed third on the high bars, fourth on the rings, and sixth on the pommel. Once selected for Queensland, he went to the 2021 National Championships, where his team placed first. At the National Championship, he placed second on the high bars and eighth on the rings. Great work, Kai, and we look forward to seeing you at the upcoming Commonwealth and hopefully Olympic Games. <laughs> Next, we have Brooklyn Dave. Now, Brooklyn's career goal is to be a firefighter, and he is also the award winner for design. He receives an all-rounder award, a gold service award, and the Roger Baum Award. Hello, stay with me. You can, you can go over there. <laughs> Brooklyn has been awarded the Roger Baum Award for 2021 for his outstanding work with, the Aspley, with Aspley's Arts Department. This year, Brooklyn took on the role of open mic leader, showing his ability to organise events and mentor students in both junior and senior years. Brooklyn is extremely giving of his time, shown through his involvement in our festivals in the local community. He's always willing to lend a hand, working extensively with our backstage crew. We wish him all the best. Next, we have Stephanie Hines. Alrighty. So, Stephanie's career goal 
is to study medicine, and she is receiving a grade point average award, a biology award, an all-rounder award, a silver service award, an Aspley Eagles program award for six years of service, and also I am pleased to announce is the winner of the Ampol Best All-Rounder Award for 2021. <laughs> the Ampol All-Rounder Award will now be presented to Stephanie to recognise outstanding academic leadership, service and her extracurricular participation in our school. Stephanie has excelled in all of the aforementioned areas through her involvement in cultural, sporting and community service initiatives. Well done, Stephanie. <laughs> Lillian Thomas. Lillian's career goal is to study, study psychology, and today she is receiving a Grade Point Average Award, the Modern History Award, an All Rounder Award, a Silver Service Award, a Consistent Academic Achiever Award for five semesters, and lastly, the Growth Mindset Award. The Growth Mindset Award is presented to students who consistently demonstrate and model a growth mindset in our school. Lillian has excelled as civility captain by role modelling a growth mindset to students and played a key role at our Growth Mindset Forum earlier in the year. Congratulations, Lillian, on this fantastic achievement. Next, we have Chloe Layden. <laughs> Chloe's career goal is to study music and get a job in the music industry. And her awards today are an all-rounder award, a gold service award, a community engagement performance award for five years service, a vocal excellence program award for six years of service, an Instrumental Program Award for six years of service, and finally, the Cultural Development Award. As Chloe makes her way across the stage, I can say she's a very worthy recipient of the Cultural Development Award, given her immense contribution to open mics, the band, musicals, youth festivals, plus many more events on our school and wider community calendar. Please give Chloe another round of applause. <laughs> Javan Wondrous. <laughs> Javan's career goal is to study aerospace engineering and today he is receiving a Grade Point Average Award, the Chemistry Award, the Specialist Mathematics Award, the Physics Award, an All-Rounder Award, I might need to take a drink of water in a minute, the Silver Service Award, a Consistent Academic Achiever Award for six semesters, and finally, the ADF Future Innovators Award. As, as Javan makes his way over there, he, he is the re recipient of the ADF Future Innovators Award because he has demonstrated, as you might have guessed, outstanding academic achievement in science and mathematics and has maintained an extremely high level of achievement across all of his STEM subjects at Aspley High. Well done, Javan. <laughs> Michelle Pitcher. Michelle's career goal is to be a nurse 
and today she is receiving the following awards. A Grade Point Average Award, a Biology Award, Hospitality Practices, an All-Rounder Award, a Gold Service Award, an Instrumental Program for Six Years of Service, a Consistent Academic Achiever Award across five semesters, and finally, the Sandy Landers Service Award. Michelle is receiving the Sandy Landers Award because as Student Council Captain, she has led many initiatives and assisted with, fund with fundraising throughout the year, such as Shave for a Cure, Blue for Autism Day, and Jeans for Jeans Day. Michelle, you are a deserving recipient of this award. Well done. Finally, Tabitha Franklin. Okay, Tabitha's career goal is to study music at QUT and today she is receiving a Community Engagement Performance Award for five years service, a Vocal Excellence Program Award for six years service, a String Ensemble Award for six years service, Consistent Academic Achiever Award across five semesters, a Grade Point Average Award, the Music Award, the Music Extension Award, an all-rounder award, a gold service award, plus there are two additional special awards I'd like to tell you about now. So hold your applause, we can do a big clap at the end. All right, it is also a pleasure to announce that Tabitha is the recipient of the Long Tan Leadership Award for 2021 because Tabitha has exemplified outstanding leadership across a range of disciplines at school as vice captain and within the wider community. This award is designed to encourage senior students, tomorrow's leaders, to actively participate in the life of their schools and local communities, and therefore highlights why Tabitha is receiving this award today. Secondly, I am pleased to announce that Tabitha is also the recipient for the Excellence in Music Award. Tabitha has worked extensively as a music leader, strings leader, and many, many other roles across our school. She has shown her talents at school events and festivals and has been a member of the Australian Girls' Choir since 2010 and continues to achieve very highly in her studies. Tabitha continues to amaze us with her talents and is a worthy recipient of the Excellence in Music Award. Please give her a round of applause. Okay, we have been doing a lot of clapping and cheering this morning and that's the way a graduation ceremony should be. What we are going to do now though, Year 12s, without tripping over, because we don't want to hurt an ankle before the formal, I would ask, in a minute, we are going to stand and face the sound and lighting booth for a photo and when we do that, ladies and gentlemen, can we please give our graduating cohort a massive round of applause. That to introduce us, yeah. Okay, um, a really important aspect of an Aspley High graduation ceremony is to hear a parent perspective. And, and friends and family who are, who are sitting here today, one of our parents, who I'm about to introduce in a minute, has very kindly been sitting there the whole time ready to present and speak to you. We know that high school can certainly be a bit of a roller coaster. 
and a person who has been part of our Aspley High School family for a very long time is the mother of Emma, our school captain. Can you please join me in welcoming to the microphone Mrs. Michelle Welsh. Good morning, everybody. Wow, it's quite the sight to be able to stand up here this morning and look upon this beautiful group of students who have just graduated. You should be very proud of yourselves today and all that you have achieved. Um, it's a privilege to have been asked to speak this morning and I endeavour to express my sincerest thanks to the staff at Astley High on behalf of myself, um, Emma's dad, Ian, and the rest of the families that are represented here today as well. And hopefully leave an encouraging word um, for our graduates. Mrs Miller, on behalf of myself and Ian, thank you. When my family moved to the suburb of Aspley back in 2007, the plan was for our daughters, Joanna, Kimberly and Emma, to attend Aspley East Primary School so Joanna could access the unit for the blind there and then transition on to Aspley State High School. Though at that time, Aspley High's reputation was very concerning. However, thankfully, in the following seven years, Aspley High's reputation was getting better and better. For apparently the new principal, Mrs. Jaquita Miller, in conjunction with an amazing team of teachers and staff members, were transforming our local public school, Aspley State High, into one of Brisbane's best. Our old, eldest, Joanna, started year eight in 2014. So selecting a high school that was dedicated to meeting her learning needs, as well as providing an exceptional learning environment for Kimberly and Emma was top priority for us. And we believe we found that here. Mrs Miller, you and your team have provided our daughters with a safe, supportive and inclusive place of learning and they have thrived in this school environment. Thank you to all who have personally taught, supported, challenged and mentored our girls. And thank you to many others who were there as a smiling face or words of kindness that they needed on a tough day. So today our family says goodbye to Aspley High. However, Emma does have a three-year-old sister. So maybe, just maybe providing that you are still here, Mrs Miller, in 2030, we may be back. <laughs> So now to this beautiful group of young adults, who of course are the reason that we are all gathered here today. Ever since Mr Harding asked me a few weeks back to speak this morning, I have been deliberating on what might be the one piece of advice I give to you this morning. Um, because believe me, by the time you reach 46, um, you've made many mistakes, won many victories, and also learned lots of lessons. So it was when I was watching a study recently by a man named David Forson that I knew what I most wanted to, what, that I knew what I most wanted to share. So David said, "We are the result of the choices that we have made." Okay, let me just say that again. We are the result of the choices that we have made, and I found this to be one of the most empowering thoughts that I had ever heard. So choices. The rudder of a ship directs the course that the ship is on, right? And the same is true with the choices that we make. Both big and small, our choices will directly influence the course that our lives are on. So every day we choose. We choose what we eat, where we go, what to watch, who we spend time with, how we treat others, how we spend our money. We choose to forgive or to be bitter. We choose to take responsibility for our actions or blame other people. We choose to be kind or unkind, generous or selfish. We choose how we will respond to the things that happen in our lives that are out of our control. So are you starting to see why this statement is so empowering? So what is, Im what is important to you? What do you want your life to look like in five, 10, 20, 30 years time? And I encourage you to take time to consider this 
and then be deliberate in making choices that will lead your life in the direction that you want to go. So graduates of 2021, life as we know it is always changing, but take heart for you are all born for such a time as this. I pray that you wake up each day believing that you are valuable and loved beyond measure. I pray that you find joy in being yourself and joy in allowing others to be different from you. And finally, have fun tonight. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, Michelle. We are, again, extremely grateful and, and appreciative and we take those words on board. And um, it, It's fantastic to have that parent perspective uh, at our graduation ceremony, so thank you very much. It's now time um, to get a bit of a student perspective and I would like to welcome our school captains to the stage to deliver their valedictory speeches on behalf of the cohort. Please welcome Javan Wandrus and Emma Medcalf. Good morning, Miss Miller, Mr. Harding, staff, family, and most importantly, the graduating class of 2021. Thank you all for being here to celebrate this milestone with us. It's an honor to be up on this stage today, representing the cohort for the final time. I remember, Way back in year seven, my little 12-year-old self would look up to the graduating class thinking, wow, I cannot wait for that to be me. A feeling I imagine many of you have also experienced. Together, we counted down the years, months, days, and even seconds to get to this very moment. And let me tell you, it feels just as amazing as I always imagined. Looking back, these past six years have flown by incredibly quickly. In this time, we've watched each other develop into the group of strong and independent young adults sitting in the hall today. With the support of everyone around us, we were able to navigate ourselves through the, through the complexities that Year 12 has had to offer, such as those brutal 50% exams. Now the time has come for us to enter the adult world, which I still cannot believe myself. It is very daunting to think about what might come in the next stages of our lives without having the comfort of the school's routine. From this point on, we will have complete freedom to do whatever it is we want to do with our lives. It's honestly very intimidating, yet exciting at the same time. Despite all the joy we're feeling towards finishing high school, today will forever be bittersweet. Over the past six years, we have dedicated around six hours a day, five days a week to this school. Within these gates, we have laughed together, cried together, and created a lifetime's worth of memories. These are the moments that will be missed. There are many people deserving of our gratitude, but in this short time, I would just like to say on behalf of the year 12s, to our teachers, thank you for your motivation and encouragement throughout the years. Thank you for not just being a teacher, but a friend. We appreciate everything you've done for us, even though you sometimes like to interrupt our class time chit chat. To Mr. Harding, thank you, thank you for being the best Year 12 coordinator that we could have hoped for and for always being a friendly face around the school. To Ms. Miller, thank you for being so dedicated to our education and preparing us for life beyond Aspley. Finally, to the class of 2021, we thank you for all these years and for making this experience so special. Thank you for the positive impact each of you have made on this school. You truly are an amazing bunch of people and I could, not, I could not imagine spending my high school life with anyone else. As we sit in the hall together for the last time today, I would like to say good luck to you all. I genuinely wish you all the best for the next stages of your lives. This moment has been a long time in the making. We've struggled through tough times but we still pulled through. It is a great privilege to be standing here, delivering my final words to this cohort. As school captain, I've had the pleasure of being part of the leadership team who have worked so hard with Miss Miller, Mr. Harding, Mr. Hofmeyer, to ensure grade 12 was an unforgettable experience. And what an experience we had. Through athletics days, 
swimming carnivals, A-factors, and even musicals. There have been so many enjoyable experiences over the past six years, and it's sad to see them go. But of course, as we head into the future, we'll have new experiences, make new memories, memories with our friends, our family, maybe even at a plane station. The future isn't far away, and every moment is special, but few moments will ever be as memorable or as special as this moment here. I know I've talked about the future, but we live in the present, and today is about us, about all the memories we shared together to get to this point. This point, where cramming for an exam or starting an assignment the day it's due is no longer a worry. There were many duties that I looked forward to this year, but none as much as the opportunity I have today to express my gratitude to this place and the people within it. And I cannot begin to mention gratitude without, of course, thanking all the parents in this room. I can understand firsthand how difficult we can be, but honestly, we cannot thank you enough for all the support, the sleepless nights, and of course, all your care. These graduates wouldn't be seated in front of us today if it wasn't for you. But before I finish, I find it only appropriate to mention the elephants in the room, the people who work tirelessly to give us the best chance to succeed, who spent hours drilling content into our head and gave us the emotional support we all desperately needed. And you all know who I'm talking about. No, not Mr. Sparks. The rest of our amazing teachers. This includes not only our senior teachers, but all the ones who helped us along our journey through high school. Whether they're there in class, helping us with tough math problems, struggling to understand our horrible grammar, or battling with the newfangled technology to get our team's meetings up and running. They were always ready to help. I could not be more thankful for the teachers I've had through my education here. And even though we do your heads in, you will all be missed. Thank you for this opportunity. To my fellow classmates, good luck on your journey. And this might be the last time you hear it, but don't forget to show a growth mindset. I hope you're feeling good about yourself, Mr. Sparks, wherever you might be in the room. I certainly am feeling good about myself. Okay. So our, our final um, performance today, uh, three of our very talented students, Millie, May and Brielle, and they will be coming out to sing an inspirational and uplifting song as a message to our graduating Year 12s. Please welcome the singers to perform Fly Away.
house was greener than it is Cause I had a dream that someday I would just fly, fly away And I always knew I couldn't stay So I had a dream that I'd just fly away, away Oh, fly Good morning again, parents, students, teachers, and those joining us from home. It is a little bit of sadness now that our graduation ceremony for our class of 2021 does draw to a close, but I can't let the, seating, the proceedings close this morning without first thanking a few people. Firstly, to Mr. Harding, Mrs. Hassam, and Mr. Hoffmeyer. The hours and dedication that you have put into today's ceremony as a parting gift for our senior cohort is often unseen, but never unappreciated. So thank you very much. <laughs> to people who work tirelessly behind the scenes and assisting student movement around the school, Mrs. Lonsdale, Mr. Crosby, Mrs. Redmond, Mrs. Paul, Mrs. Hopes, Ms. Floor for organising the fantastic performances. Thank you for your contribution to our farewell gift to our current seniors. And finally, to Mr. Clitheroe, Mr. Camille, Mr. Woods and Mr. Harding for your work in organising the live stream and the, technic the uh, technical issues behind this morning. Thank you very much for making this available to a wider audience and many of those family and friends that couldn't be with us today due to our hall capacity. Thank you very much. So before we depart our seniors for the very final time, would you please join me in congratulating our senior class of 2021 one more time. And sadly, it is time to depart, but we are going to hang on to the seniors for just a few more minutes. So we would ask the parents, we ask the parents if we could start to make our way out of the hall, please. We have doors to either side at the front and also doors at the back. And it is not raining, so we can safely go out the front doors, which is really nice. And your seniors will join you up at the front gates very, very shortly. Thank you. <laughs> 